Welcome to another episode of Gin Clear Aviation. My name is Dan. Today we are going to look at the basic leaning of the engine's fuel air mixture. I must point out that I am not an engineer and I am only imparting knowledge that I have gleaned over the years. The very best book I have ever read on aircraft piston power plants is called Engines by Mike Bush. If you fly behind a Lycoming or Continental engine, this is essential reading. I'm not sponsored or in any way paid to promote this book, but be kind to yourself and your engine and get a copy. As Mike Bush tells us, running lean of peak has advantages. It's cleaner, cooler, less stressful on the engine and uses a lot less fuel. You could say leaner is greener. Initially, we are going to use exhaust gas temperatures to help us lean the engine. To use exhaust gas temperature, known as EGT, as a leaning reference, you first need to determine what your peak EGT is. Numeric values of EGT, for example 1420 degrees Fahrenheit, are not meaningful. The only important thing about EGT is their relative value, i.e how far below peak EGT and in what direction. For example, a reduction of 100 degrees Fahrenheit rich of peak or a reduction of 50 degrees Fahrenheit lean of peak. Once you are at peak EGT, if you continue leaning, that is taking more fuel away from the mixture, you will see the EGT drop on the lean side of the peak. And if from the peak EGT you enrich by adding fuel to the mixture, the EGT will also fall, but now on the rich side of peak. We now understand that we can be below the peak exhaust gas temperature, either on the lean side of the peak by continuing to lean out, or on the rich side of peak by pushing the mixture control back in. OK, let's go flying and look at the practical leaning of my Cessna 182. Popham Radio, good morning. Outbound flight, Golf Delta Alpha November Oscar. Golf November Oscar, Popham Radio, your readability 5, runway new 03 with a left hand circuit, QNH1011. First thing to do is to be established in the cruise at the correct height and the correct engine settings. So at the moment I have an altitude of 2,000 feet, a manifold pressure of 22 inches and an RPM of 2,200. So let's now look at the engine uh, monitor system and we can see what happens when we lean out. So as we can see here, 22 inches of manifold, 2,200 RPM and we're at 2,000 feet on a QNH of 1011. And at, currently, we are 131 knots um, indicated. Our true airspeed is currently 133 knots. So if we have a, a true airspeed of 133 knots. And as you can see, um, all the cylinder head temperatures and all the exhaust gas temperatures are quite low. And we are burning in litres per hour, 65 to 66 litres per hour without any leaning whatsoever. So now what I'm going to do is press the lean assist button. And now as we lean, as we take fuel out of the, uh, the mixture, um, we'll see what happens to the EGTs, the exhaust gas temperatures. Right, so I'm going to start leaning out now. So I start winding the mixture out. Now as we can see the exhaust gas temperatures are rising. The exhaust gas temperature cylinder colours to go from green to a blue colour when they peak. And as we can see the litres per hour are also coming down. We're at 50 now and 
Right, the first few cylinders are now peaking. Right, so all the cylinders are peaked by turning blue, and now you can see the numbers underneath are minus numbers. Now, we're looking for at least minus 20 um, on all the cylinders. So we've got minus 20 there. And you can see by this blue arrow on the litres per arrow, this blue arrow indicates the fuel flow when the system hit peak exhaust gas temperature. And because the, because the arrow is now below, it means that we are lean of peak. So we're using less fuel than peak. And as you can see by the exhaust gas temperatures, um, they're all below. There's minus 17, minus 18 going down to minus 60. On, uh, on cylinder number three there. And as you can see now, the litres per hour is 37 litres per hour. Now we've now sort of got a true airspeed of 128 knots and an indicated of 126. So by taking out the fuel and making it lean of peak, we have lost some power. But obviously, instead of doing 60 litres per hour, we're now doing 36 litres per hour. And our true airspeed is 127 knots. So we could cruise at this all day long, sipping away at 37 litres per hour and doing 126 knots. All our CHTs are well below 400. And, and obviously our EGTs are lean of peak. And we're still maintaining 2,000 feet. And as you can see, our manifold pressure is still 22 inches and our RPM 2200. Now if we push the mixture control in, so we're adding fuel into the mixture, we will then go up to peak temperature again and then the temperatures will start dropping on the rich side of peak. So we continue to add fuel into the mixture, but the temperatures will drop on the rich side of peak. So I'm now going to start adding fuel, so winding the vernier mixture control in, and as we can see the temperatures are all changing. And now we are minus degrees Fahrenheit, but on the rich side of peak. So this is minus degrees Fahrenheit below peak exhaust gas temperature. But now, as you can see, we're on the rich side of peak because the white arrow on the litres per hour is above the uh, blue arrow that tells us the litres per hour fuel flow at peak EGT. So now, let's go to at least 100 degrees. So all cylinders now are 100 degrees Fahrenheit below peak EGT, but on the rich side of peak. So what can we see here? So we're still cooler than at peak EGT, but look, we're now doing 56 litres per hour, but our speed is 134 knots. So we've got a much better true airspeed of 136 knots, but we're burning 56 litres an hour. So those are our two settings, if you like. We've got a performance setting, which is still lean of peak, but on the rich side. And we've got 56 litres per hour, giving us 136 knots. Or we could have stayed at the lean side of peak, um, which we were doing 39 litres per hour and getting about 124, 125 knots. So about a sort of seven, eight knot difference. We're using much, much less fuel when we are lean of peak. So now we'll start pulling it out again. I'm winding it out, the vernier out. And now we are leaning the mixture. And as we can see, the exhaust gas temperatures are changing again. And on our litres per hour, that's coming down. 
Now we're at 42, 40 litres. So here we go again. So we're at minus 28, minus 34 on some of the cylinders. So we're on the lean sign side of peak, indicated by the white arrow being under the peak flow of fuel, or rather the, the peak flow of fuel at peak EGT. And we're now 37, 38 litres per hour. We're doing 120, sorry, 130 knots now, so it's about 128, 130 knots. So we're not too many knots off the other side, which the other side, which is rich of peak. So here we are, really. This is my preferred setting of um, 22 inches of manifold pressure, 2200 RPM, 2000 feet. Um, I've leaned her out to 37 litres per hour and I'm doing 125, 126 knots at the minute, um, fluctuating around there. So, um, again, five, about eight. That's uh, just gone down to one, two, two. So it fluctuates, but we, we are going slower, but we are sipping fuel um, and, and cruising along at quite a decent rate of knots, in my opinion. So now, the next time I'm at 2,000 feet and I've got the setting of 22 inches of manifold pressure and 2,200 RPM, I don't really have to look um, at the lean assist. I can literally just wind the mixture out until I get a setting of, say, 38, 39 litres per hour. And I know that that's the um, perfect setting for this engine. Obviously, now I'll have to work out settings for, say, 5,000 feet and 6,000 feet. Um, but once you've set that up, you just know how many litres per hour to aim for. And as you can see also, the CHTs, which are very important to monitor, are all well below the 400 degree Fahrenheit limit for Continental engines. The, there's another method that if you haven't got all this fancy um, lean assist um, and gauges and EGTs and CHTs, what we can do is literally just lean out until the engine just slightly starts to sound rough and then we wind the mixture back in um, a few turns until it's not rough and that is a perfectly good setting for um, an engine so let's try that so we'll go to I'll turn the um, I'll leave the lean assist on so we I'm just going to push the mixture all the way in so the mixture is all the way in now and as we can see um, we're back up to 60 odd litres per hour. So now I'm going to start just pulling this back until the engine um, sounds rough. So I'll just keep doing this and we'll watch the uh, the instruments um, as I do this. Victor's for the Isles approach. Runway 26, number one with 40 miles from touchdown. Continue so I'm just listening out to feel a, a reduction in RPM and a little bit of the, a sound of roughness. Right, I can feel now a vibration in the airframe and so there's a roughness to it and we're down at as you can see 33 litres per hour um, but now if I add so, so although the engine's now running slightly rough I'm now going to go back and increase the mixture and suddenly all that vibration and roughness goes away wound the mixture vernier in so we have more fuel into the mixture. So we've taken away the roughness now, and the engine is very smooth. And interestingly, as we can see, we're at 38, 39 litres um, per hour on our gauge, and the engine is running smooth. So without going through all that lean assist, just by pulling the mixture back until it's rough and adding a little bit of uh, mixture, adding some fuel into the mixture to make it smooth again, we've ended up at exactly the same point um, that we had uh, with our posh um, lean assist system. We're at 39 litres per hour and everything's normal. So it's a perfectly good way of leaning. November Oscar, finals, runway 03. November Oscar, Roger.
With regards to leaning, let's talk about the difference between injected fuel systems and carburetted fuel systems. In my Cessna 182, I have a carburetted Continental 0470. Leaning is much easier on injected engines as the mixture distribution is much more even than on carburetted engines. Carburetted Continental engines are known for poor mixture distribution, although carburetted Lycomings generally have a good mixture distribution. One technique to improve the mixture distribution of carburetted engine and thereby enabling the engine to be leaned more aggressively before it starts to run rough is to use a touch of carb heat during the cruise. The warm induction air improves fuel atomization and mixture distribution in the engine and will enable you to lean more aggressively before the engine starts running rough. If you can't get your engine to run lean of peak then it'll have to be rich of peak, but both situations save significant fuel burn. But what happens if you don't have an EGT, CHT or a fuel flow gauge? The leaning method is to stabilise in the cruise with desired cruise setting RPM, then slowly lean the mixture until you feel and hear the onset of engine roughness. Then slowly push the mixture lever back in, just to the point that the roughness goes away. This is a good tried and tested technique. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and like if you can, as this really helps me build the channel. Wishing you clear skies ahead. I'm Dan from Gin Clear Aviation.